Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and here is my latest jewelry thrifting from the three or four stores that I regularly attend uh, or visit in my town. I um, hope you're all doing really well, um, but let's get started. So here is um, a new, as far as I'm concerned, sorry, a new necklace set two strands with what I think are plastic um, beads which look like tiger eye and with a matching set of earrings and I just thought that this was a nice set um, and so I picked it up I think it's something that I would wear um, it's not real tiger's eye but it's nice and light so whenever you need that little bit of sparkle and the gold, um, it's a nice little set to wear. Next, I have a white choker style necklace. It's hard to, harder to see it against uh, this background, but I'll try to put it against my hands. And these, um, unfortunately, it's missing a few of the little white plastic beads, which I hope to... Uh, find some replacements. One, two, three, four, I think it's five I counted. I forgot to check before I bought it. Um, I looked at it, I saw that it was a, a nice design and that it had um, Coro on the clasp here and I uh, hurried and picked it up. I think I paid uh, less than two dollars Canadian. So it'll be um, a little bit of a challenge to do the repair but I don't think it'll be that difficult. So I always have to re remind myself, check stuff, check stuff. Now this is a very lovely brooch, I think. Um, unusual. I don't uh, know uh, its age uh, at all. It's got um, brushed metal, a couple of tassels, these two sort of bow or ribbony type sections. It is uh, both a pendant and a pin, a brooch. And Oh, it is signed. Let me just, uh, usually I try to find signed things. Oh, yes, this one was unusual in that it is signed with a number, 4588. So um, it's textured on the back, so I don't think it's vintage. I, I guess it possibly could be. Um, but uh, 4588 is the only marking that it has. And I haven't had a chance to do any uh, investigation on that as of yet. A little um, alpaca bracelet from Mexico with um, shell inlay. And I'm not sure what the black is. I, I haven't checked too closely. It is marked uh, alpaca Mexico right here in the center. And it's obviously too small for my wrist. Well, sort of, yeah, generally. But I picked this up um, to put it away for my granddaughter. So a lovely little alpaca bracelet. Sometimes you just gotta buy the pretties for the pretty kids. Now this was one of my $2 thrift finds. This is a heavy glass bead necklace. It's got these beautiful faceted, um, I guess you would say teardrop shape beads. Um, some uh, probably fire polish rounds that are sort of a silvery color, uh, blacks, um, flattened uh, rondelles in black, and then faux pearls. Um, I picked this up um, both because it, it's quite pretty in itself, and also it could be harvested for its beads. Um, it is very long, and so um, it could be taken apart, made into a shorter necklace, or um, a necklace, bracelet, and earrings. So lots of things that could be done with this beautiful piece. Um, certainly I couldn't purchase um, the beads, the replacement beads for $2. Now, this is a phenomenally heavy choker. Um, I forgot to bring my ruler to check the length, but you can see that it's a twisted chain um, 
intertwined, so uh, I'm not sure exactly what type of chain this is. I guess I should look that kind of thing up. Um, and, yes, it's marked uh, copyright Monet right here, uppercase M, uh, lowercase O-N-E-T. So I'll have to look up and see if I can determine the time frame for this particular uh, choker. I don't think, um, well, I don't think chokers of this weight anyway are as popular these days. It's quite small, uh, relatively speaking. It's in excellent condition. So um, I know Monet makes um, good quality jewelry and is still making good quality jewelry. So this one's a little difficult to tell um, the time frame that it belongs to. Okay, the next piece I have. Um, uh, most people don't uh, collect necklaces with these glass pendants. Um, and I have started to pick up a few when the price is right. Um, this one is white with sort of a coppery uh, teal and blue swirls in it. Um, I have some ideas for repurposing these on necklaces, taking them off of the um, ribbon that they tend to be on, quite plain, um, and putting them with um, other beads and uh, so on to make a beautiful statement necklace. So there's one that I picked up for that purpose. Another one that I picked up for that purpose because it has earrings. Let's see if I can, uh, there's one earring. Where's the other one? There it is. So I guess I was on a bit of a haul this day, this time. Um, so here are here is a pendant, another glass pendant, um, with a silvery background, white and coppery streaks through it. And I found these earrings, slightly different, but um, still very well coordinated um, with the pendant. And again, I tend to, uh, I'll probably keep the earrings. I might put them on lever back. Whoops. <laughs> I might put them on lever backs so that they, uh, because they are glass, you don't want them dropping out of your ears. So um, I'll put these and coordinate them in a necklace with this pendant. I have lots of plans. That's when you find the time to do all these things. Uh, I came across another um, Damascene bracelet. I had, remember, may remember in a previous video that I bought one um, from a, an Etsy shop in, in Canada here. And I found this um, very inexpensively, uh, mostly because the place for the, the post here that would hold the safety chain has broken off. So there is one post in situ. Um, I might have to drill a little hole or put a screw or solder a ring on there so that I can put a new safety chain on this. Um, it's got a box clasp and it hides quite well. It is quite uh, stiff or um, what's the word? It clamps tightly. How's that? Um, so uh, I have a love of Damascene, whoops, it's upside down, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, birds and flowers um, are what I collect in Damascene. So there's birds, flowers, flowers, birds. Um, so this was a nice little find. And you can never have too much Damascene as far as I'm concerned. Just like you can never have too much Tigera. All right. Now, this little um, pin and pendant is not marked. Um, it was, let's see, it was on a card by itself, I can't remember the price, um, and then a slightly larger version of it with a very similar stone, I would say identical stone, probably malachite, um, 
and anyway, was on a card marked 925, so it was at least double the price. Um, I picked up this one. I figured it's probably just its poor cousin, um, and it's probably silver. Uh, I have actually cleaned it up a little bit. It was very dark, so you can start to see the silver shining up a little bit on the outside. It's definitely a handmade veil. There's the seam at the side. A uh, beautiful piece of malachite um, and uh, something that uh, I think I got a good deal on. Um, so not everything is necessarily marked. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, metals testing kit yet, but I'm pretty sure based on how it's cleaning up, the little tiny bit of, of uh, washing I've been doing, uh, uh, that uh, this is silver. And if I ever do get a testing kit, uh, it's one of the things I'll test and uh, I'll verify at that time. I actually um, met a lady each day who was wearing malachite earrings that she bought uh, at yesterday's Celtic festival. So I can't wait to show her my pin. So, what have you been doing? We've been um, doing things like taking our grandkids to the park to play, uh, weeding the garden, which it always seems to need weeding, um, and doing a little bit, bit of jewelry thrifting. Um, these are some lovely silver tone earrings that I picked up. Um, they're clip-on, but that's fine. And you can see uh, right here, perhaps, I'm not sure if that's, let me get it in the camera. I tend to get out of the camera here. So right here on the back of the clip, it says Sarah Cub, and then sideways here, it says patent pending. Um, so these are a lovely swirl um, earring. I recently joined a, a Sarah Coventry, a um, couple of Sarah Coventry Facebook groups. So I'm going to try to find out um, from their resources uh, what this um, pattern is called. They have some great um, jewelry books, the, the Sarah Coventry Home Party jewelry books um, online. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to do the research that way. And it, they're also very knowledgeable. So it's great to share with them. So a pair of Sarah Coventry earrings that I was very happy about. Again, $2. Um, here's uh, yet another of my glass pendants. This one actually was on a ribbon and I've already taken it off. Um, and uh, so this is uh, coppery with green in the background. So I think I have now about a half dozen of these and I'll have to take um, a few days and make them up into ne uh, necklaces and then uh, show you my final designs. Um, another item that I uh, thrifted, and I, I looked at it for actually several weeks before I bought it because no one else was buying it, and every time I looked at it, I liked it. Um, it's a porcelain pendant. Oh, got, sorry, I've gotten too close now. There we go. Porcelain pendant with this lovely line of gold through it. Um, abstract, but just gorgeous in itself. On the back, it is marked... Uh, hand painted by Carolyn Fisher. And the other porcelain work that I found by Carolyn, um, vases and so on, in this actual location underneath the brooch, it has a stylized C and F that is her logo. I haven't been able to find out anything specific about Carolyn, just found other pieces which have this same marking. Um, so I will keep doing that. Um, uh, keep doing research and I may be able to report back some point in the future um, if I find more of Carolyn's work. Now, and next I have this pair of clip earrings. I, do, I don't mind wearing clip earrings and I picked these up because they match a necklace that I have that I wear quite a bit. It has um, the oval pendants like this. Um, of the shape, not with the exact same stone configuration, but uh, the colors of the metal, the, uh, the darkened bronze or dark copper with the, uh, the light rhinestones and the sort of root beer uh, cabochon in the middle, faceted cabochon, um, would go nicely, nicely with this other necklace that I have. Um, and I was actually surprised when I uh, got these home because I... You know, I thrifted them for a different purpose, but they actually are marked here. 
Um, don't know if I can get this to where anybody can actually really see it, but it says C. Stein, copyright. Um, and I've looked up Catherine Stein because that's who comes up when you look C. Stein or look for C. Stein. There's a lot of um, jewelry, mostly earrings, available on Etsy and eBay attributed to C. Stein. Um, they're mentioned as being vintage from the 80s. Um, but that's about all the information they give. I have found one um, company that was started in 1971, um, Catherine Stein Designs, which is now owned by FAF, um, and uh, or they're still manufacturing jewelry. But the Catherine Stein Designs logo is an oval with... Um, a C, a large S in the middle, and a D. So these just say C period Stein. I, so I have no way of figuring out if that's just an evolution of the logo. I haven't um, found the maker's mark um, online, except in, uh, as I said, pictures from Etsy and eBay. On Poshmark, there's jewelry uh, called Katie Stein, C-A-T-I-E Stein, but it just has uh, hang tags. It doesn't uh, have any kind of a jewelry mark displayed, and that just could be, that's how the uh, sellers took the pictures. Um, so I have no idea if, they, if there is a relationship between Katie Stein jewelry, Katie Stein designs, and the C Stein uh, earrings that I have found. Um, it's one of the challenges of uh, doing online research. Also, I did not find this particular pair of earrings online. Um, so I will keep looking and uh, I'll think about Catherine Stein or C. Stein when uh, I'm wearing them.